Welcome Sunnydale students to the last day of our week of prayer here in spring of 2020. Uh, my family and I have missed seeing all of you here, uh, especially those who were part of our Wednesday night uh, life group and those who are faculty family students. We enjoyed so much having you over and all of you having you over. It's unfortunate that we could not finish out the school year with you. Um, so we'll see how the Lord leads. Uh, this is a unique time we are living in, probably the most exciting time in human history because as each day passes, is one day closer to the coming of our Savior Jesus. But before Jesus returns to take us home, there are several things that need to happen. And I've said this before in sermons, I, I've, I say this in our uh, evangelistic series. Before Jesus returns to take us home, several things need to happen. Number one, the most important thing is that the gospel, the unadulterated Word of God gospel needs to be proclaimed. That which reveals the character of God needs to be proclaimed throughout the whole world. That's found in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. And then the man of sin, the Antichrist, needs to be revealed. That's found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's another thing that needs to happen before the Lord, Lord returns. And there's also going to be a great falling away of people, people who will deny the faith, who not deny the faith and deny trust in God, the great falling away, that's also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then there's going to be the mark of the beast issue for another, another global crisis, a final crisis. And so those things need to happen before Jesus returns. Um, and so some may be wondering here, is this corona, coronavirus pandemic the beginning of the end? And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But uh, if you will, please join with me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we are grateful that you have given us the privilege of prayer, uh, the privilege of knowing you. We ask for your grace and your mercy to be with us. Help us to understand your word. Help us to move forward in faith. Help us to be more like you, we pray in your name. Amen. Some may be wondering, is this coronavirus pandemic uh, the beginning of the end? The short answer is yes. Uh, it is a part of the signs of the last days given by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 and also other chapters in the Gospels. But the beginning of the end of the world began when Adam and Eve first chose to sin against God. The result of that decision to distrust God has led us down a path where sin will eventually be destroyed. The earth in its fallen state is headed towards destruction because sin had corrupted it. And so God, God's goal is to eradicate sin. At the same time, he is, his goal is to save us. Jesus said, I came to save that which was lost. He came to save us. He gave his life for us. So he wants to eradicate sin and he wants to save us also in the process. Once this virus issue, this uh, emergency issue is over, there will be a new normal. Most likely, life will not be back to uh, normal as usual. It's not going to be things as normal uh, as things that they were. Uh, many, uh, many of you who are watching haven't lived through what we call 9-11-2001, September 11, 2001, where uh, buildings were struck and uh, they fell down. That was in New York. And there was a new normal after that. Uh, there's going to be a new normal after this. Exactly how that's going to look like, I don't know. Uh, but I am going to uh, cause us to ask a few questions. Yeah, what will be the new normal after the dangers of this virus subsides? Will it be switching to a digital currency? Are we going to get rid of all cash and everything going to be switched digitally? I've heard people talk about that. Will it be mass inoculations? Are people going to be forced to do something that they don't want to do? Uh, will it be mandatory uh, non-commuting days to reduce pollution? People talked about the benefits of high-density uh, populations where there's a lot less pollution because people are not out commuting. Uh, will there be more restriction on travel or large group gatherings? I don't know. Will there be mandatory days to stay at home for non-essentials as we have it right now? Are we going to be on lockdown? Are we going to be called to report our neighbor's actions to the government when they don't abide by government mandates? I've seen that happen here as well. Do we really want life to return to normal? Do we really want life to return to normal? It'd be nice if life returned to normal, where we did our routine things. 
but does Jesus want us to live a normal life? Maybe the real question is, do we want Jesus in heaven more than what we knew to be as normal? If we want Jesus in heaven more than this earth, then we should not desire a life that was normal. We should desire life on this earth fit for heaven. The theme Bible verse and other presenters have talked about this is found in 2 Corinthians 7, 14. Uh, this won't be hopefully the first time you're hearing it. Uh, but it says, uh, 1 2 Chronicles 7, 14, this is after the building of the temple. And so God is speaking to the wisest man that had ever lived halfway through his reign. So it's about 20 years into it. And God says to King Solomon, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now keep in mind, this verse is really not given to unbelievers. This verse is given to believers. It's us, the church. At that time, it was the Israelites. Now the Bible says that we are called to humble ourselves. And so how are we to humble ourselves? Well, it's to pray and seek the face of God. It's to turn from our wicked ways, just like it said in the verse. It says, God will hear and he will forgive. What a great promise. God will hear and God will forgive our sins. He will change our hearts, he promised, if we seek his face. I need a heart change. How about you, friends? I need a heart change. I need to grow closer to the Lord. There are also, that, there's a phrase in there, heal their land. Now, at this point in history, this is God's people, as I said, the Israelites, and the land that was given to them was the land of Canaan, the Israelite land. It was a covenant inheritance given by God if they were to choose him and, and continue with him. Today, there is no earthly inheritance under the new covenant. The United States of America is not the earthly inheritance. We have a heavenly inheritance that we wait for. It's the ultimate promised land. The U.S., the new world as it is, is not the promised land. So today, there is no inheritance under the new covenant of Jesus' blood on this earth. It's our heavenly inheritance. So the healing today that we need, what is the healing today? What is it that God says when he, heal, when he says, how will he apply it today that he's going to heal our land? Well, ultimately, it's us. It's everything that we talked about before that. He wants to heal us. We may not get to life as what we would call normal, but Jesus is offering us spiritual healing in that verse. What wakes you up in the morning? Is it an alarm? Is it the alarm on your phone? Is it your younger sibling? Is it your animal? Is it the sun? Do you even need an alarm to wake you up? Many of us do need alarms to wake us up. We sleep so deeply that we can't wake up. And so we need an alarm to do that. An alarm is used to wake us up so that typically we don't oversleep. Well, what we're gonna read here next in Romans chapter 13, 11 through 14, is Paul sounding his alarm for the church. Notice what he says here. This is Romans chapter 13, 11 through 14. And do this, knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revel revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Now, here's the thing. Paul says here, knowing that the time it is now high time to awake out of sleep for salvation is near. Jesus is sooner to come today than he was yesterday. And so he lists the things of do's and don'ts that we as the church are called to do and not to do. We are called to awake. If you look at all the verses here, verses 11 through 14, we are called to awake. We are called to cast off the works of darkness. We are called to put on the armor of light. We are, we are called to walk properly and decently. We are called to put on the Lord Jesus in character and action. So everything that is godly, everything that is heavenly, 
We are to wake up and we are to do it. We are to say, hey, now's the time to get serious about God. Now's the time to move forward. I have to put away the deeds of the darkness, cast off the works of the darkness, and I have to put on the armor of light, which is the truth. Now, here's what he says not to do. He says not to sleep, not engaging in revelry or drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust, not in strife and not in envy, not to make provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. That is, we're not to live carnally anymore. We're to live for God. We are to live with heavenly mindedness, if you will. You know, a friend of mine was asked by his pastor when he was younger. The pastor asked him, what do you think our church needs? He responded, alarm clocks. Why is that, asked the pastor? Because the church is asleep. The Bible says in verse 12, the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Jesus is soon to return. That is, the deeds of darkness on this earth are far spent and the day of the Lord, the second coming, is at hand. And we are called to put on the light. We are called to put on the truth. We are called to put on Jesus. So friends, as we close, we are called to live the life that Jesus wants us to live. We are called to share the truth of his word with the world. We are called to labor for souls. We are called, quite possibly, maybe to do what we've never done before. Maybe give a Bible study. Maybe reach out in, in the different gifts that you may have. We are called to give the last message of warning to whom God has paid an infinite price for their salvation. We are called to wake up and do our part to further God's kingdom. And so I'll close with this question. Are you and am I willing to do that? Are we willing to wake up spiritually and do our part to further God's kingdom? I pray for myself, my family, and for you as well. May we do the will of God. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, you have given us this time these few moments to reflect, and I pray that we would carry these sentiments with us this day, this week, and in our life, and, and call us to awaken out of our stupor, call us to wake up spiritually and be alert to the things around us, because there are those who desperately need you. And so we want to be useful for your kingdom, and we know that we desperately need you. We need you for our sakes. We want you to revive and wake us up. We want to be serious about you. We want to be in earnest about you. And so I pray for the Holy Spirit upon myself and my family and for those who are watching, who are listening, that we would covet you, that we would covet Jesus, that we would covet your righteousness, that you would empower us to finish the work here on this earth. Help us to stand strong for you. I pray for all of us, Lord Jesus, that your hand would be upon us. In your name we pray, amen. God bless, brothers and sisters. Hope to see some of you, or more of you, or all of you, very soon.